Prince Harry sips traditional Fijian drink kava, just as his grandparents did 65 years ago, after being given roast pig and a whale's tooth during welcoming ceremony with glamorous Meghan. Prince Harry took a sip of traditional drink kava and was offered a roast pig and a whale's tooth as he was officially welcomed to Fiji with his wife. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were presented with the gifts as they watched a ceremony in Albert Park in capital Suva as their marathon Commonwealth tour continued. The couple waved to the crowd as they arrived in their motorcade to the Vircro Carvi Vacavigno, which mirrors the one attended by the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh in 1953. Harry and Meghan were greeted by chiefs in a tradition known as the Tama. The crowd, slightly damp from the rain shower or a bit of blessing as the master of ceremonies put it, cheered and waved Union Jacks and Fijian flags as the couple arrived. Hundreds maintained reverential silence, with only the occasional burst of children chatting or a nearby clock chiming, heard over the rhythmic drums and chanting of the ceremony. Harry and Meghan sat on a stage as he was given the whale's tooth, a sign of wealth in the Vakasabu, before he were given kava, a drink made from a mashed plant root in the Yukona Vakachuriga. Harry, his three medals catching the floodlights, looked on as the kava was made with the root wrung out and a bowl passed to the duke on the stage. He accepted the bowl and held it to his lips as the crowd cheered. Rain began to fall again as the lavo, a presentation of food of a roast pig and a basket of dalo, a root vegetable like a potato, was offered to the duke. He told the crowd, again to huge cheers of delight, Beulah Venica. The Duchess and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible during the next two days and celebrating the links and close friendship between Fiji and the United Kingdom. He signed off Venica, or thank you, to laughter. To close the ceremony, the couple watched a meek, a traditional dance with Harry leaning forward in his seat. Dozens of people from the village of Naklo took to the Albert Park turf to perform for the Duke and Duchess. The area is known for its strong links to the armed forces. The couple sat on a raised dios with everyone seated below them as a mark of respect. No one is allowed to wear anything on their heads or have anything above their head like an umbrella as per traditional protocol. Earlier Meghan was forced to hold on to her hat as she touched down in a windy Fiji with Prince Harry. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were given a guard of honor as they disembarked the royal jet, but the blustery conditions saw the red carpet blown around as officials struggled to keep hold of it. The royal couple traveled by charter flight from Australia to the capital Suva embarking in casual shirts and jeans and stepping off the Qantas plane in more formal attire. Meghan wore a dress by Australian label Zimmerman, a Stephen Jones hat, earrings which were a gift from the Queen, worn in Chester at their recent joint engagement there, and a bracelet which was a gift from the Prince of Wales. Leaving the Qantas charter flight in light rain and strong winds, the couple were introduced to the Han Frank Bainamra, Fiji's Prime Minister and his wife, Maria, Rotimu Mukapa, leader of the opposition, Alessandro Trapia the High Commissioner's wife and Rear Admiral William Napoto, commander of the RFMF. The Duchess was presented with a bouquet of flowers by a flower girl from the chiefly island of Ba, the island home of Rot to Ape and Siakaka Ba, who ceded Fiji to Britain in 1874. Queen previously visited Ba in 1982, before Prince Harry made his way to a dais on the runway. Prince Harry and Meghan observed a royal salute. Meghan positioned a few meters behind him with the welcome party, as the national anthem was played and the red carpets on the tarmac blew off in the wind. The Duke was then invited to inspect the Guard of Honor before Harry and Meghan left for their next engagement, a meeting with Fiji's president, Gioji Conrad at Boron House. As the couple's convoy left the airport, hundreds of well-wishers had lined the road out of the airport, waving flags and cheering. From Boron House, the Duke and Duchess attended the official welcome ceremony in the city center's Albert Park. The ceremony, known as the Vircra Kravi Vakavigno, embodies Fijian cultural identity and heritage. The Duke and Duchess will then leave Albert Park for the Grand Pacific Hotel, where they will be staying for the two nights they are in Fiji. Following in the footsteps of the Queen, they will acknowledge members of the public gathered around Albert Park from the balcony of the hotel. Tonight they will attend a reception and state dinner hosted by the President of Fiji, at which Harry will speak. It will be the most glamorous event the couple have so far attended during their 16-day tour. The couple are spending four days in the South Pacific on behalf of the Queen, 
traveling on to Tonga later in the week. But there are questions over the palace's wisdom of allowing the pregnant duchess to continue with the trip as there is a moderate Zika risk in the region. The mosquito-borne disease can cause serious defects in unborn fetuses and the foreign and Commonwealth Office advise expectant mothers not to travel there. But Kensington Place insists the couple have taken medical advice and are happy for Meghan, who is around 12 to 14 weeks pregnant, to continue with her trip. Harry and Meghan will be staying at the Grand Pacific Hotel, where the Queen also stayed in 1953. Since then Fiji has hosted a number of royal visits, including five from the Queen and three from Prince Charles. On Wednesday, His Royal Highness will lay a wreath at the Fiji War Memorial and meet a number of Fijian war veterans, some of whom served with the British Armed Forces. The royal couple will then visit the University of the South Pacific campus in Suva. From here, their program will split. The Duke will travel to Koloai Suva Forest Park and the Duchess to the British High Commissioner's residence, before she heads to Suva Market. On Thursday, the royal couple will travel to the city of Nadi in western Fiji, where they will attend a special event at Nadi Airport. After an official welcome ceremony, the Duke and Duchess will unveil a new statue commemorating Sergeant Delayasi Labalab from Nadi Airport. Their Royal Highnesses will take a chartered flight to Tonga. In Tonga's new Kualofa, the pair will visit the St. George Building for a call on the Prime Minister Akilai Zipohiva and members of the Cabinet. From there, they will attend an exhibition with the Princess Angelica at the Fonelua Centre and then travel to Tupu College. The Duke and Duchess later travel to the Royal Palace for an official farewell with the King before heading back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. The couple are expected to attract huge crowds during their time in Fiji and Tonga but some are criticizing the timing of the visit to Fiji, which comes less than three weeks before the country's elections. Robin Nair, who was Fiji's Foreign Affairs Permanent Secretary until he resigned last year, says he is concerned Fijian Prime Minister Frank Bain Imrama will take full advantage of the royal couple's widespread publicity. Fijians love the royals and the government knows that there will be great euphoria and joy created by the visit," Mr. Nair said in a statement provided to the ABC. He said he is concerned the incumbent prime minister will use photo opportunities with Harry and Meghan to paint himself in a positive light. Another outspoken former government official, Shailendra G. Rayu, condemned the visit in a Facebook post. In a letter addressed to the UK High Commissioner to Fiji, Mr. Ryu called for the visit to be postponed to a mutually convenient and more appropriate time.